Hello again. I'm back. Um, uh, I'd like to continue on from last time, uh, just take a pause. Um, I hope that the other charts when I'm comparing them are not uh, too small. So I've gone back to this one uh, because I think this is more clearly visible. Uh, but I was uh, talking about this because I wanted, I was talking about the connections. I need to show the other charts to show you that I, I, I'm not making it up. And that these tangential tantras, these uh, elements, these threads, uh, which connect to other charts in history relating to the question, which connect to other people, which connect to other horrories, um, you always get this. In, in horrory of important questions such as this. And I, I feel that um, this method of working through slowly, of trying to form a link with the uh, associations, it will absolutely try and help our mind tune into the chart a little bit better. But what I was emphasizing or trying to emphasize was that really this chart or this particular ascendant and this particular Saturn keys into the 1066 chart and so asks a question through this individual who also has a kind of Capricornian funnel into his being. And so he has his Mercury in Capricorn as well. And so this way he acted, the individual acted like a funnel to ask a national question, to ask what was on, on the collective mind. And notice his, um, his uh, ascendant is round about this 15 degree Jupiter here. And so there is this inclination to want to know what is ahead. Jupiter, the great expectations, it's in the house of the 11th house of, and normally the 11th house in older astrology are to do with the hopes and wishes, sometimes to do with the collective itself or participation in the collective. There is a great deal of speculation here going on. At the moment it's retrograde, so nobody knows which way it's going. The the forward momentum of one thing or another has been overtaken and uh, it's it generally going backwards and people are asking a lot of important questions. There's a lot going on at the moment, the CBI, the uh, uh, island, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the European Parliament, which has uh, more people in it now against the European integration project. Uh, Fran uh, uh, France is almost, um, you know, every week with the yellow vest, we don't see much of it on the news. Um, Austria and uh, Poland and Hungary and uh, uh, Ireland, I believe, uh, um, um, Italy is soon to, uh, I think, vote Salvini in, who is um, uh, st staunchly opposed to this uh, integrationist move, which will see nation-state democracy uh, vanish from the scene in 50 years or so. Now, uh, I, as what I was trying to explore in this chart is that it taps into the Englishness, but here I see almost the Jupiter in Sagittarius as this flight into the future. Sagittarius represents flight, it's the taking off of the arrow, and uh, you, you'll see here uh, it has to deal with the ancestral past of the 12th house, all those things are coming out in the open because of it, uh, uh, but the 11th house here, again the hopes and wishes uh, are, are to do with prosperity, if we take the 10th house here as the government, uh, it wants to prosperity, um, but nevertheless, at the moment, this uh, sense of it is that it's going backwards. It's a, a little bit in reverse. We've had take, taken a, a, a different move backwards. It will be interesting to see, let me see where have I made the notes. Yes, that um, Jupiter goes direct uh, on the 12th of August, which is tomorrow. Um, in other words, we shall see something move forward, something in the nation. It will probably be uh, shown on the news. Um, but uh, this progression of Jupiter starts to move ahead in the 11th house and we get a little bit more movement than we had before. But uh, in order to, again, get into this chart, let's have a look at a few more very interesting tangential tantras. The um, connections or the feeds in to other people and situations. We're going to look at the chart, for example, of the Union of England and Scotland. We're going to have a look at that between England and Ireland and uh, various other things. But the first, the other thing that I wanted to point out here is this, um, this seventh house. 
In all orrery charts, the orrery astrologers always involved. If Saturn is in the seventh house here, uh, in the, which it isn't, but it, if, it, if it is, this is a clue to saying the, uh, the astrologer uh, needs to really think again because what he might have to say will cause great conflict or distress. Wherever Saturn is, it tends to cause upset because people don't like being told no, especially Jupiter and Sagittarius. These two are really entrenched in their own positions. We have here one, Jupiter in Sagittarius can be very belligerent, very forward looking. It knows best. I know where we should be going. It's a kind of better than thou attitude. I can see further ahead than you. And um, it can get on its hind horse, of course, which is the uh, the Sagittarian opinionate, opinionation of a, of, of, of a great uh, idealism. Uh, in other words, not very grounded very much, but not brought down to earth, tends to speculation or over speculation, thinks that if it puts its, all its money on one colour, that it alone will obviously come into uh, a, a winning streak. So Jupiter can get ahead of itself at the moment that that uh, idealisation or move ahead has uh, taken a backward step. But we see this Saturn also entrenched in its own sign. So this is Saturn in its own sign, conjunction and angle with the Capricorn angle. This makes it a very powerful planet. Um, and you see here um, its conjunction, the South Node. Now, the South Node is just often just put as a malefic influence, sorry. Uh, but I would like to see it more constructively, more creatively, that the South Node um, points to those forces in the past of which we, we have to deal with. Called the, the point of past karma, although I don't want to re introduce a reincarnation into the mix or we'll get very confused. But um, it is a moon force, it's the moon side of the nodal axis. It's the dragon's tail. It's, it's that which holds us back. And this Saturn here is, is somehow conjoining a force. It's, it's, it's connecting into a force of the past. And again, it's in Capricorn. So perhaps this older worldly um, structure built on uh, 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 you know, centuries and centuries of kingdoms and monarchs. It's a deeply hierarchical sign is Saturn is uh, Capricorn. It works on pyramidal structures. It works on hierarchies of power or position, hierarchies of money, hierarchies of social status, all of those things. But so that kind of hierarchy, yes, it can oppress. Yes, it can be um, problematic to people at the bottom. You know, this is the serfs and, and the landowners and, and so on. And the, the model key is being head of the church. And um, this Saturn being very uh, powerful and strong, but still its own person. And so hierarchical structures are not necessarily bad and then they get corrupt. They always go a bit corrupt, of course, in the end. But um, this, this Capricorn institutionalization, this uh, industriousness of the nation, um, it, it, the, the structure of it is embedded in the psyche of the nation and it's going to go with a deep fight. And so this pull towards the past, this pull towards Englishness in the psyche of the nation is is being confronted, I think, with this Jupiter. No, they're not in an opposition, although it does suggest that the uh, the two powers that be, this is the most elevated planet, and this is the most angularized planet. So are we pulled back towards this uh, the national identity as it is it's sensed on? This is an, there's been an argument about what the national identity is. And so this Saturn brings this up, it consolidates it, it, it confronts us with it and says that we're not going to go without a fight. Now, uh, coming back to the seventh house, the seventh house, the rule of the seventh house is, or the seventh house itself, is often involves the astrologer. And we see here nine cancer 52. And interestingly enough, my sun sign as the astrologer in this case, is nine cancer 20. So we have not only the quarant being involved by one and a half degrees with this ascendant, 
we have the astrologer too being involved here. Now, when we look back at Kairos and this mysterious process which asks the question at a specific time, maybe the diamond of the person, this tutelary spirit which keeps us on course, is in, in some other plane of reality connected to the collective mind and that asks us as an astrologer, um, somehow I am involved in this question, but the horary itself is saying, look, this ties into the very fabric of who you are and what you do. Uh, it's it's saying to me that I am absolutely involved in this and I would say to it that uh, this uh, nine degree uh, cancer involves me um, it, 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 as I said, son in intent this is my profession as an astrologer as well as a psychotherapist and there's something here to do with uh, that and my involvement but all I'm doing here is entering an experiment on behalf of astrology and I will do it the best as I can but I like this moon, my ruler. Uh, it's in Pisces, which is it's in the second deacon of Pisces, which is the Cancer deacon. It is um, nicely uh, manifest here, and it has an affinity here with Jupiter, because Jupiter is, is in the sign, but the moon will eventually square this Jupiter in about four degrees. We shall look at that when we come to the outcome and what's going on. But just to give you an idea, this moon here is a representative of me. In general, the moon can co-rule anything in, in a chart. And we might be able to use this as the movement or the action or the progress in the matter when it makes aspects. As you will see, the moon will actually go to square Jupiter. It will eventually go to a sextile of Saturn. A conjunction of Neptune and then go on to trine Venus but before that the intervention here is from the um, the moon trine to the tenth house as well and so all of these things will mean something in the progress of the question so that is another coincidence of events but not just an odd coincidence, a stark, a, a, a coincidence which smacks you in the face when you become intrinsically involved in an honorary question. And let's not, let's not uh, miss the point here. This question was apparently asked at random. Something moved the questioner to ask it at this specific time, and this is the ascendant. You see? And so if it was asked at any other time, an hour later, half an hour, all of these connections would not be here. And this is why I've called it a great question. And perhaps this suggests something of this Jupiter, which is always to do with the great, the bigger, the better, the, um, that, uh, the impossible dream or something of that nature. So Jupiter here, within its retrograde position, the dreams of certain facets of the country which want to move forward in a future looking progression with Europe and a, a wider expansion with that. It doesn't bother so much about the English national identity, but this historical structure underpins the nation. It's rather like the, the root system of a tree and it's very solid. And we can see here also something of this uh, because uh, uh, 17 Taurus right at the roots uh, has, has uh, you know, wants to have a stability if you like. So these moon's nodes then are, has a reference to the past and this is often a reference towards the future but there's a very interesting correlation here with this uh, 17 degree Capricorn um, node. Um, in research for this question and about great questions, I was looking towards Geoffrey Cornelius's take on a William Lilly chart that he asked about whether the Presbytery will stand. The, um, the great Calvinist movement in this country and Presbyterianism um, are threatened to take over. And, um, and the forces of Cromwell had uh, come back from Ireland and um, he had uh, uh, resigned from military work and so on, but the army hadn't been paid. And 
and uh, it's as if the, there, there were some other forces in the country which did not want the presbytery to win over dominance and to become, um, become religiously um, overlaid with this rather Puritan, strongly powered Calvinist, um, uh, very, very, very austere kind of um, uh, religion. And there were forces in the country that wanted to move the other way. And somebody asked, um, uh, Lily, a question about whether these forces would stand. Now, this is, becomes a great question, a great question, a question of national importance. And William Lilly, um, as one of his most famous chants, uh, did uh, come out against Presbury, uh, Presby, uh, the uh, Presbyterian, and um, uh, eventually the offer, the oracle, the uh, the prophecy came true. Uh, uh, but looking at that chart is, was interesting because I was looking for some clues about how to go about this one. And we see, fascinatingly, of course, William Lilly often makes an appearance in important charts. Um, his, uh, he has a 22 uh, Gemini MC, and you see it on the cusp of the 12th uh, and the cusp of the 6th. I'm not sure what this means, but I, I suggest that uh, because I'm I'm involving astrology in terms of it being a ritual act of divination and a mystery, perhaps this is something to say to bring William Lilly back from the archives of the, of the astrological past. This also is the degree of my MC. So I am implicated in this. So this is, I'm working through the technicalities at the moment, but this, uh, this leap into the mysteries of how a chart connects up and the magic of Kairos and um, this astrological universe that we come around in, it, it brings forth that mystery into being. Now, coming back, I wanted to say that when I was looking at the presbytery, uh, pre the, will, will, the, uh, will, uh, will the presbytery stand? Um, uh, Presbyterianism, um, the degree of the nodes on that chart are exactly the same. The south node is at 17, I think it's about 1720 Capricorn, and, and 70, obviously, the, the, the north node. And that was amazing to me when it suddenly realized that something of the ancient past, these threads, this tantra, this Tantra is often connected with energy dynamics floating in the collective. That they're 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 there. Um, for those of you who saw my little bit of on on Nixon and the twenty four um, the twenty four full moon, he was implied by the full moon coming out, and of course we had the moon landings. It's as if the energy dynamics of people shown by their chart live on in the collective and can be triggered off. And here it is. It calls upon astrologers to look very carefully at their history, to go back and to see where they where, where to go back to see where their foundations are, but also to look forward into the future, which is what this astrology um, experimentation is to do with. Need I point out that to this degree is also the eclipse point that I've been going on about and on about for two or three uh, 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 charts. Um, uh, we have unfortunately heard the news of uh, Jeffrey Epstein's death in prison. And if you remember, we looked at um, his chart too in relation to this eclipse point. So the eclipse eclipses this seventh house cusp. Is this me or is this seventh house also a significator of those forces that oppose this Englishness? And by that, I don't mean I don't mean um, just just Europe or whatever. I mean that those forces in the country, those forces in the psyche, which seek a more um, a, a homogenous, a, a closer tie emotionally, a kind of greater family, if you like, and 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 it it eclipses those as well. And so we see these great forces of Cancer and Capricorn act, this being the archaic dimensions of the English psyche, and perhaps these the, the other dimensions that have sprung forth. But this is eclipsed, and this is one of the clues here, that the eclipse fell on July the 2nd, fell on this position which of course fell on the English uh, sun as well. So the English sun was eclipsed, but here it represents those forces which oppose it. Now, another couple of interesting points of Tantra apart from this uh, uh, 
apart from this, we see here that the 17 degrees Scorpio uh, 34 is on the MC, and I associate the MC with Boris Johnson at the moment. The MC, because once we've taken over, this no longer is the uh, ascendant of the querent. This is the ascendant of the nation. This is the national identity, and we can start to interpret this in terms of a mundane chart, but within light of the fact that it's also an orrery looking uh, ahead in some way. Now, I found this interesting because one of my videos related to Boris Johnson as almost a channeling the spirit of Churchill. If you remember, Churchill had five or six planets in uh, uh, um, fire signs and Boris Johnson has nothing in fire signs and it's as if my sense of it was that Boris Johnson's special interest in in Churchill was the fact that he was looking and has always been looking uh, in life for some kind of inspired significance some kind of greater meaning in his life which fire signs often show and he saw that in um, uh, a, a Winston Churchill, and he, I think there's in some sense he's picking up or emanating on an, an unconscious identification with the hero in the country. That was that was a, a couple of videos ago, was, uh, looking at Johnson's chart and and Winston Churchill's chart. A brief a brief look at that. But well, interestingly, what we find here is this 17 Scorpio 34 is the exact degree of Winston Churchill's Mercury. Um, and uh, Winston Churchill had Mercury opposed Pluto in his natal chart. So there's this um, feeling that he could talk about the survival of the nation. Scorpio always has a little view on what threatens it. So it was just a little tangential point that I wanted to uh, bring up here. Now, a few more, because this is a question affects a great deal of people and a great deal of nations. And I wanted to look ahead to see what else we could find. We've looked at the King William chart, but let's also have a look at the Union of Scotland and England chart in the 1707. Let me just move that away from there. Okay. Tangential Tantra 2. Now, have a look this point and this point. If we look across here, we, offer, we see uh, that's nine, so that's, um, that, that, that's nine Taurus, uh, obviously conjoining the, uh, the fourth house of here, but what I wanted to point out here is this Chiron at nine, Capricorn 53. The woundedness of a nation, this uh, connection to a union of Scotland and England was always tense. And you'll see another Capricorn ascendant here. You see, and we see here that's um, uh, 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 involved in a uh, uh, involved in this degree symbolism of Capricorn. I just wanted to uh, point that out because um, again, it connects up. Scotland uh, always had an unhappy relationship, I think, with England to some degree. And no matter what a devolution has brought, the uh, arising of the Scottish National Party a, a few years ago sim simply showed that uh, there was still a, a vital force uh, wanting independence. Uh, Saturn is moving through here about 16 degrees by transit and is, is appearing to uh, is, is it like bring forth something uh, of the independent quality that it, that it wants. Um, a divorce, if you like. But Saturn often re represents the separation, represents borders and the clarity of individual identity. Now, we see here the moon at 24 Aries, while we had the full moon at 24 cancer which was in the seventh house here so something of this is is being hit off and connects up to the full moon the um the uh, nine degrees of this ascendant let's have a look at the union of ireland and england chart the 1801 chart and anybody that's been seeing the news over the past year have been talking about the Irish backstop, the, um, the Taoiseach also, um, as, oh, of course, wants the Union of Ireland back, they always do. And um, I, again, it's not for me to go back into the history of shoulds or shouldn'ts or what's fair or what's not. 
I mean, the Irish actually um, uh, in, in ancient times uh, were the beginnings of uh, taking over the Scots. They were, they were the original Scots and took over the Picts in Scotland. So they invaded Scotland, took over it, and it became a Gaelic nation. So the, um, <clears throat> who knows what the rights and wrongs are history. I have to leave the historians to decide that. Um, but what do we see in this chart? Yes, a nine degree fourth house. In other words, uh, the chart of the 1066 chart is here. Again, is the union of Ireland and England and we see a 10 degree Capricorn sun. And the new moon was at nine degrees. 38 cancer on the top of here sorry 10 degrees 38 yet again oppose this and i believe there was one other thing that i wanted to look into into this chart but it's it's chiefly this connection between the sun and the capricorn which also connects up here okay let's have a look at another one In 1922, um, although the uh, uh, island took back control eventually, there have been many troubles between um, Ireland and uh, England over the centuries. Uh, 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 I don't want to get into that or the whys and wherefores of, of it, but I did want to point out a couple of things. Um, in 1922, um, Northern Ireland decided to stay with England it's decided to side with it and a border was created between Southern Ireland and Northern Ireland. Southern Ireland became its own nation once again, but it's always hankered after union. And you can understand that in any basic island. However, what do we see in this chart? This has been the problem. I suppose the backstop was the problem. Um, it is the, at the moment the government of Northern Ireland and the UK, uh, the Northern Ireland and Britain. And so this is this is who's in charge at the moment in the conservative in the um, uh, government. But what do we see? 23 cancer. Remember, that full moon was at 24 cancer so this is hitting off the question of the nation's identity of course the fourth house what is it founded on the basic identity and again will it survive you see because 10 cancer 39 that was the eclipse point on Ju july the second this ties in this famous eclipse point that we've been talking about, that I've been harping on about for several videos, yet again, emphasizing, energizing specific points in a chart to bring them out. This is a very potent position. 10, Cancer, where do I belong? Is our country under threat? And I believe that uh, the Northern Ireland does feel tremendously under threat and therefore has decided against the backstop and they were the main cause. Otherwise, there would have been a kind of uh, a, a, a division and we would have had this uh, feeling that uh, uh, eventually the tension, would go, go, this backstop would have carried on forever. And so we come back to the original chart. There are other points of tangential tantra. Um, there always are, but I wanted to point out the main ones. This involves Ireland, involves Scotland, includes those treaties. I haven't done Wales as well, and I haven't done the, um, uh, the uh, 1957 chart of the European Union and all that. I've covered that in other sessions. But what I'm saying is that as we continue to look at this question and the connections and the threads between these charts, it, it starts to show that this chart is alive with symbolism. It's alive with history. It's alive with this present moment of which this was, which was, was cast. We see the showing of Kairos coming through this individual to make this chart a truly telling one. We see here the connection what is this chart about? This connection to a larger conglomerate mass or a kind of union of other nations, a friendship with them. Saturn rules both, but in this instance, it specifically rules the um, uh, first house, which is the national identity or the English national identity, which I'm seeing is opposed to this moon or this. Now, there's a lot of opposition here in the seventh house. 
they're not all exactly opposed but venus here in its own sign it's very hopeful venus and has a mutual reception with the moon which we should go into in a in another video it's quite a powerful one but all in all we find a tremendous scintillation of uh, energies and uh, a symbolic connections which start to boggle the mind if we're not careful that's why the principle of Occam's razor is very important but um, I wanted to show you the fruits of my research now this sat this Pluto in the first house will the English nation survive I think that's all, all, also uh, uh, about it here and um, <laughs> reflects something of what this 10th um, uh, house is to do this it does feel very much that um, the English national identity as I've called it is being resurrected it's being brought out to the surface it's not dead it's being brought alive but there is a real threat to something underneath that the question of brexit has um, uh, invoked not only in individuals in certain parties but in the nation as a whole not necessarily however all of the nation if we go back to the 52 I mean, and I know there are 52 for, uh, for leaving and uh, 48 uh, uh, against. I know there are these um, small variations, but nevertheless, this is what I think it is essentially about. Progress for the future or to stay tied to a, uh, a, a past steeped in strength and power and the uh, uh, I suppose the, um, the 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 sovereignty, the, the the ability to choose what one wants to do when one wants to do it, uh, um, fail or succeed. Capricorn needs to do things in its own way and be as great or as important as it can be. It is a striving towards excellence. It's a striving towards survival and being the best that you can. That's what the Capricornian thing is here, as opposed to having to rely in an intermingling relationship uh, where one would be vulnerable. Okay, let's take a breath there. Why have I gone into this in such detail? Because it's such an important chart. I even wondered whether I should actually present this chart at all because uh, there is something about uh, showing uh, the importance of astrology like this and uh, certain people could say upon it lives or dies astrology. I don't think so. My attempt here is to start to lead the listener, the viewer, into an analysis of this chart through its symbolism and start to show some of the magic as it shows through and then eventually hone in and uh, going through these stages of engagement with a horoscope like this will lead us into a further and further um, uh, more powerful and perhaps more confident uh, connection with the horoscope itself. And so uh, present some uh, idea of the future outcome of this. But the resolution to the matter <coughs> is not whether we leave or whether we stay. That isn't that, 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 that that's the outcome of a question which is an either or. I think there are implications in this chart, as I say, about the uh, what it, what these strengths are about, what 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 the antagonism is fundamentally about, and uh, essentially a choice about the future, about where we want to be, and what we want to build on. Because inevitably, this chart shows it's a real dimensional shift in identity from one um, one state of affairs. One, one being a kind of Capricorn country to being a more involved, international, um, uh, globally mixed, enlarged space of that Jupiter in Sagittarius. But I shall leave it there. Uh, go and get a cup of tea. And I may do the third one after this. I shall see. Cheerio.